Hello everyone, this is Amani Sadoddin from Appify Lab. Welcome back to the Flutter e-commerce app UI design tutorial series. In this video, I am going to be continuing from where we left off in the last video. So we had done implementing this much. Let's have a look at the design and see what we are up to next. So we have this container. If we have a close look, we see that it's just a row with few columns, each column having an icon image and a text. And then we have this vertical divider. So let's move on to coding. To start with, I've taken a container and added comments to make it easily understandable. Now, let's give it a child as it is a row. So we'll take a row. Let's pass its children. Inside this row, we'll take another container. That will hold our column. Inside this column, let's take a container. One for the icon image and another one for the text. Let's pass in the child image. I'll be using asset image which I've already defined here. I created a new folder called assets and I have all my images here. So the first image should be a t-shirt image. Let's add it. Asset slash images slash jpg then let's add the text Okay, so we've got both our row elements on screen. Now we just need to resize it and style it to match our design. First of all, let's give this whole container a height and width. That's this. Let's give this container some margin at the edges. Next we move on to resize this image. Let's give it a height of around 30 and width of 45. Okay, we could also add a color to this container to make it more visible. It has a white color. Now you see. Next, let's style the text using the textile property. We need to resize it over here. Let's call font size 
and set it to 11. Now let's give a padding to this row, sorry column, we format it and a padding. So I'll be given a padding of 10 at all directions. That's it. Now let's build the divider. That will be a child of the row. So let's start the divider here. Let's take in a container. Is. Okay, let's give it a height. Say 50 and then a width of 1 and a color. Okay, with an opacity of 200. Let's see how it appears. Okay, so that's good. Now that we have this element on screen, you see the rest is just the same thing with different images in text. So I'll copy this and edit it. Have a divider and our image and text. Let's copy this and paste it here. Okay, it's because of the comment, I guess. Yes. Let's remove this and we'll be good. See how the other element has also appeared? Let's change it to jeans. Okay, probably I've named it something else. Let me go and look for it. I guess it's this. Taking a little while to load. Let's do it here directly. And let's change the text as well. Okay, similarly now I'll add in all the other elements as well. So I've added remaining elements. Now let's compare it with the design. Okay, so here we see that there's certain padding between the image and the text. So let's go and add that. I'll wrap my text in a container so that I can style it in all the different ways that container provides all its properties. Let's add in a padding. The edge in sets only to the top, uh, padding of around 8 pixels. So, doesn't this look better? Let's do the same with the remaining things as well. So, now that I've got this element done, let's move on to the next element, which is this image. So this is a horizontal list view containing images. I'll be using list view builder to code this. Let's start. So that I'll take a new container here. Let's pass the list view builder as its child. Okay, 
This takes in few parameters such as the scroll direction, which is by default vertical, but here we need a horizontal scroll view. So let's set it. Then it takes the item count, that is the number of elements we are going to take in our list. Let me just write one for now to avoid any errors. And then we need the item builder. Item builder, see, okay, what it says this item builder takes in a build context and it takes in the index. Build context is just a spot on the hierarchy where these widgets will be placed. So let's start defining them. Okay, now we need to return something over here. Let's return a container. Are we missing something? Let's check. Oh, it should be a semicolon. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is let's continue by giving this container a height. Say 150 and then let's begin coding. So we are going to return the images. So let's type child begin image dot asset and I'll pass in the image slash images slash Give this image a height and width. And let's say a width of around 200 maybe. Let's see. Mm, let's Increase the size by 250. All right, that looks better. Now let's give this container from padding. The top, I'll give it a five. The bottom, Let's give it another 5 pixels and then left 5, right 5. Okay, looks good. Maybe we could increase the size a little bit more. Let's give it a greater height, 135. Okay, there's no change so just there's no, the change isn't that significant so let's keep it as it is and move on now we have only one image but as this is a list view so there won't be many images for that we need to define a string up here so i have defined a string called image url that i'll be using in my list view let's go back down now I'll be passing image URL dot length that will return us the length of the list and here I will say image URL index. So index starts from zero and we have two elements. So see we get both the elements here and it is a scrollable part. Now we see that the two images take up different space. That's because we haven't specified any fit for the image. So let's say fit and box fit dot cover so that it covers all the space in the container.
So doesn't this look much better? Let's have a look again at the design. Let's compare it and see if I've missed anything. Okay, looks good. Now let's move on to the next section.